Now, Salvador Dali is somebody who was very obsessed with the idea of science and loved putting scientific ideas inside his paintings. In fact, he once wrote, I am a carnivorous fish swimming in two waters, the cold water of art and the hot water of science. And he always would love inviting scientists round to his house rather than artists um, because he found their sort of stories much more stimulating for his art. So if you look at um, his art, you find already a lot of sort of mathematical shapes hiding inside there. Very classical mathematical shapes. Um, It's the sacrament of the Last Supper, um, and the sacrament is being held inside a dodecahedron, this uh, platonic shape made out of 12 uh, pentagons. Actually, tapping into that idea, Plato believed that the platonic solids were somehow the building blocks of um, the universe, um, four of them making up the atoms, but the fifth the dodecahedron, was the shape of the universe. But actually, Dali isn't the first to love putting uh, platonic solids um, in, inside um, his canvases. And in fact, um, we should thank the artists of the Renaissance for actually um, helping us to rediscover some geometric shapes that have been lost since antiquity. Uh, so again, somehow the artists helping us out to discover, rediscover things. Um, uh, the Platonic solids, there are five of those, and here we can see in this painting of Lucio Pacioli, a mathematician, um, uh, we've got the dodecahedron on the table here, but perhaps what's more interesting is this extraordinary glass structure floating in the top left-hand corner, uh, filled with water. Um, this is an example of something called an Archimedean solid. So these are um, symmetrical objects where the faces don't all have to be the same. So if you think about the classic football made out of pentagons and hexagons, they're arranged in a symmetrical manner, so the football um, is not uh, is as round as possible. Um, but you're allowed to use hexagons and pentagons to build that shape. So this shape here is called a rhombi, oct- rhombi cubo octahedron. It's made out of these triangles and squares. Um, and actually, for an artist, you know, this is the time when they were able to suddenly realise the three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional canvas. So it was a real show-off moment for an artist to be able to draw some of these shapes and show how good they were at perspective. Um, but actually, it very much helped mathematicians because um, we knew the five platonic solids. Um, they'd been written about in Euclid's Elements. But we also um, had known that Archimedes had discovered 13 what are called Archimedean solids made out of these mixtures of symmetrical faces. Um, but actually, nobody knew quite what all of these shapes look like. And it took really to the Renaissance um, for us to recover these shapes. And in particular, um, Leonardo was very helpful in uh, illustrating uh, some of these books uh, and uh, showing what these shapes actually look like. So Dali was interested in very classical shapes, but he also got very excited about new geometric shapes that were appearing in the 20th century. In particular, the world of fractals was uh, one that particularly obsessed him. This idea of a fractal, this is a geometric shape, um, which when you zoom in on the shape, it somehow retains infinite complexity. It never gets simple. Um, And so an example of this is something called the Sapinski gasket. So you take a triangle and then you bed another smaller triangles inside those and then smaller triangles inside the other triangles. Triangles. And uh, for Dali, he used this idea actually in this painting, The Visage of War, um, where he takes the skull with three uh, sockets, the two eye sockets and the mouth, and then inside those he puts another skull with three sockets, and you get this kind of idea of the infinite regress, a kind of fractal at work. 